pictures. The Henson family is here in their green garb. I know you can't really see Oreos green bandana on the uh, on the, the thumbnail because she was not being com very up yet. ornery. Yeah. What one? It's not coming up. No. Did you? It's still waiting. I hate to go live. <sighs> Don't curse. It's okay. What does it say? No, what did it say? When you hit go live. Remember. Oh, okay. Well, then bring it back down or go back up and check it, honey. I don't oh, know. Now it is. Now it is. Oh, okay. Just okay. delayed? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, delayed. everybody. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's beautiful Sunday morning. Um, well, here in Rolla. Uh, say it again that I missed the parade yesterday. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I, um, my friend Kayla, she shared the, some of the parade on Snapchat, and I took it and I made it into like a, a reel because I wanted to show everybody how incredibly festive it gets here. Um, I don't know that people, because I know I didn't, especially people in the, in the Northeast in New York, never associated like mid-Missouri with Catholicism. <laughs> I know it's really weird. I knew there was Catholicism in St. Louis because St. Louis and, you know, whatever, but I never thought here in the middle of the, of the state, but it is. Like the, the, the Catholic Church is a big church, and it's got a Catholic school and everything. So well, the Patrick is a, a St. Patrick is the patron saint of minors, and this was a minor college when it started. So it's a whole, like, thing. Like, there's a whole... Uh, my sister Alicia and I were talking about the prices of corned beef, and she's like, it's weird to think that corned beef is more expensive in the middle of the country than it is here. I was like, well, supply and demand. Because though the Irish saint, not really a saint, is celebrated here, um, not everybody who celebrates is Irish. So not everybody eats corned beef on St. Patrick's Day here, as opposed to in um, New York. Not all the Irish eat corned beef. That's right, yeah, and not all the Irish eat corned beef either, yeah. Um, so, um... Hey, Mona. Oh, hi, Mona. Brenda and Amy. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, Brenda likes your hat. <laughs> I surprised Jim yesterday with that. I got a little grocery order um, for St. Patrick's Day, and I saw this hat, and I was like, oh, my God, it was really cute. And it was, I don't, you don't care if I tell everybody how much it was, right? It was only six ninety five, and they had two to choose from, and this one, I, I definitely, it spoke to me for sure for Jim, but the other one was like, tie-dyed with shamrocks that were like faded which at first when I was at the thumbnail it looked like camouflage but when I zoomed into it it definitely looked like tie-dye so I was like if it was camouflage that would be perfect <laughs> if it was tie-dyed that's a much so I got this one I was like good because it spoke to me first anyway um so I have on my annual Hello Kitty um Irish uh t-shirt that I wear every year at this time I have worn it other times because, you know, I'm Irish 365 days every year. I don't have to just wear it. But my sister Jane wore it so much she wore it out. So then um, I don't want to do that. So I'm just trying to save it. I do have a couple of different shirts, but for some reason I always stick with this one. Um, you have your preferences. I do, but it's mostly that it's mostly that I don't want to, like, wear it out. Um, but the other ones don't fit as comfortably. This one's from Old Navy um, when Old Navy used to do, like, Hello Kitty, like, you know, crazy. I have, like, my Snoopy shirts, and, like, I have so many clothes from Old Navy that are different characters. Like, I had a, a Tinkerbell one that said Believe. I had a Peanuts one where it was, like, um, Charlie Brown and Lucy, well, it was Lucy sitting behind the, um, the mental help desk, <laughs> the five-cent mental help desk. Um, my Snoopy ones are from there, so... Um, I do love the way Old Navy t-shirts feel, uh, feel. The other Irish ones that I have are from, like, Walmart, um, and they're not as much. I have one that's from, I love, I wear it all year. It's like a tie-dye, asymmetrical, um, and it just says Irish on it. But I, I love that one, but I wear that all year. I don't keep that exclusively for St. Patrick's Day. Um, we're also in the middle of Kidney Cancer Awareness Month, if you guys don't know. Um, we were trying to do a kidney cancer awareness vlog last week, but I wasn't feeling good um, in the morning. And then mom went to go take a nap. So we ended up vlogging. Of, you know, it's just timing, a timing situation. Um, so there is um, a, a campaign called Orange Up, hashtag Orange Up. So if you're on any social medias and you search hashtag Orange Up, 
you can see what different cities are doing. Like, they, I, I think they liked the Empire State Building one day in Orange Lights. I don't remember what day, and I'm, don't, I'm not 100% sure they are doing it this year. I'm pretty sure they are. They pretty much do it every year. But, you know, uh, different cities, or St. Louis actually it was one of them, I think. They were lighting the the light in the arch or the capital or the the courthouse I don't, the old course i don't remember which one probably the arch but anyway so a lot of different cities do as they light up um for kidney cancer awareness so if you guys don't know orange is kidney cancer awareness and march is kidney cancer awareness month but it also represents multiple sclerosis so for some reason the powers that be <laughs> uh, made multiple sclerosis also orange um and also in march so if you see it, it could be either. Um, definitely just say, you know, thank you, whatever you're supporting. Because, again, MS is uh, also very prevalent in my family, too. So we'd like to be able to support all of the above. Um, but there's MS walks and kidney cancer walks all this month, um, different places. Um, actually, not really here. Like, I think it, the one in Missouri is in Kansas City. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of, I don't know if you guys know, we're only like an hour and a half from St. Louis, but we're like three and a half hours from Kansas City. They're not even that far apart, right? It takes less than three and a half hours to get from St. Louis to, to Kansas City because it's on one interstate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it takes longer to get to here from here to Kansas City, so it's kind of funny. Yeah, we have to drive up to Columbus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. And then Columbia. head towards, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Kansas City, and just to drive from here to Columbia, to Columbia it's two hours. It's like yeah. a two-hour drive, and yeah. then you hit the main highway going across. I mean, it's not that much like, further, yeah, but still, it's far. It's far. Um, but we actually, on the way home from Wichita, which when we went to Colorado <coughs> last time, we actually came like a back way, um, which was kind of fun, actually. We passed through Eldon, and um, we went down this one highway that we were just like let's mm -hmm. go explore because we haven't ever gone this way before so mm -hmm. that was fun do you see birds is that what you're looking at hon she's like oh, frozen yeah. on the outside did you see the birds tidbits <laughs> tidbits of my life says uh aaron gobra yes i think there's a g in there b-r-a-g uh, yeah i probably messed that one up that's okay it's uh my mom used to have a buttons all the buttons that said aaron gobrales but she had a really cool, my mom was into like, I never really talk about my mom a lot like this. I, her girl, I've talked about her growing up and having to share shoes and being poor and stuff, but she was it. huge into polyester clothes because it was the 70s and she was built like, um, like a potato with like the toothpick legs. Basically she had skinny arms and legs and she was all like boobs and shoulders and belly. So she loved the polyester pantsuits because they were fit. They, you know, they were still snug on her legs. Not snug, but form-fitted on her legs, but fit around her belly. Um, and she was way thinner than I am. Like, she was only, like, her highest was, like, 225 pounds or whatever. But um, to her, that was, you know, a big deal. But anyway, none of my sisters got skinny legs. We all got my dad's big, fat, chunky thighs. I'm just saying. But she had a special, she had a green vest, and she would collect buttons. I actually think my sister Alicia has it now. I'm not sure, Alicia, if you're in watching. Mm -hmm. um, but we all kind of took a couple of but or took a button or two. I think my sister Jane took the one that was Ziggy because I'm pretty sure she gave that to my mom. Um, before my sister Jane loved Hello Kitty, she was totally into Ziggy. I don't know if you know about Ziggy from the comics, but um, my mom had a vest and it was like her St. Patrick's Day vest. And when we would buy her button, she would stick it on the vest. Um, so that's that's the famous that's the famous Katie story. I made Jim a vest. Um, I made Jim a vest. When you were, we were in New York still, right? Yeah. Um, uh, St. Patrick, a reversible St. Patrick's Day vest. He actually was featured when he worked at Walmart last year. It was featured on the Walmart, Walmart's, um, Walmart of Rolla's Facebook page because he was all dressed, decked out for St. Patrick's Day. Um, it wasn't this shirt. It was the one with the suspenders, right, that you had on the mm -hmm. other day? Or yesterday. It was just yesterday, wasn't it? And he wore his vest and he wore his other hat. Like, well, obviously, he just got this hat, but you're... Like floppy hat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was go I, I was gonna put this on this side, but she kept trying to eat it. <laughs> I was like, "Why are you attacking my bow?" <laughs> and it made me laugh because mom, when we first got the dog, mom's like, "No hair bows and no paint in the nails." And I was like, "Okay." So I put it on. Like she tried to bite it, and I put it on. I'm like, "I'm glad I never did hair bows because she's apparently eats them." 
but she does have a pretty flower and a bow on her regular collar, so at least she can have some, some feminine touches. Now she's just chewing on her bone. She's good. Um, today, I don't... Did you find corned beef hash this morning? I didn't look. Okay. Corned beef here is really expensive and out of our budget, and because Mom doesn't really eat it, um, we weren't going to make it like, you know, she's like a fend for yourself night kind of thing. So, um, but we were going to, because it was so expensive, we were going to have uh, corned beef hash for breakfast and then do Puerto Rican corned beef for dinner, which I have a recipe for that on my channel. I shared it in 2019, I think, when at, at Lisa's house. Um, but I said to Jim, it's kind of funny because a few years back, when I was feeling better <laughs> before cancer, I would go to, I would uh, transfer between besties for, for um, spring break. So I would go to Lisa's, like Lisa would have flown me to her house to watch her kids for spring break. And then Sharon's spring break was the next week. So then I'd go to Sharon's house for a week while she took the kids to Washington, D.C., like all these things. So um, I, I ended up like having Mexican food on St. Patrick's Day for like four years in a row. It's <laughs> just oddly enough. So I was like, this is just a throwback to like Spanish food for Latino food, Latinx food for, uh, for St. Patrick's Day. So, all right, I shared everything I want to share. So what you got? Anything for me? Margaret says you all look very nice. Oh, thank you. Tidbits of Life was talking about how in Savannah, Georgia, it's a huge thing. St. Patrick's Day? Oh, very interesting. That I did not know. Yes, the Chicago River is green. Yes, they die the Chicago yeah. River every year. Boston has a huge thing in St. Patrick's Day too. Well, here in Mala, they paint the main street green. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, fine. They striped, not the whole street. <laughs> Just went. No, they did the whole. They did the whole street last year. No, they put a stripe down. Oh. And okay. every intersection. So the the stripe that goes down the middle of the two lanes, and then they would put shamrocks in the intersection, like. That's what they used to do. I have pictures yeah. of that. But at the whole street, you think the whole street, that'd be a lot of paint. The, um, the other thing they, they, they do here, because it's a college town, if you drive, there's a certain path that if you drive it, you'll have the frat houses and sororities sitting outside with signs like... Um, Honk for a shot, and, yeah. They, you know. And they'll take a shot, or they'll pop a popper, a blue, but... Yeah. Um, we did that one year. That was kind of fun. And they also have a 5K run. Um, they had it on um, Saturday before the parade. Or no, that's today. Wait. Yeah. Today's the 5K. Today's the 5K? And then they have, like, after the 5K run, they have, like, a bar hop thingy. Um, which any, you know, not running 5K. I could walk 5K at one point in my life, but I'm not running 5K. But I've done bar crawls before, so, you know, just saying. When I was younger. You know, yeah. I really, I feel like you don't get really drunk on a bar crawl because you have, do so much walking. You, like, yeah. burn off the alcohol. <laughs> and if you don't know what a bar crawl is, it's basically you go from bar to bar to bar that are, like, within walking distance. And I did one in Long Beach where they were all the bars were on Beach Street in Long Beach except for one. Like, we started on, on the Main Street, which is, um, which is Park Avenue. But then we hit and went all the way down to Beach Street. And we left because... There was a bar called The Inn, and it was so packed. We joked there was no room at The Inn. We kind of, like, walked through, grab a shot, and walk around the back door. <laughs> I'm like, there's no room at The Inn. Tidbits of Life uh, uh, said that her mom made green grits. Oh, green grits. That's incredible. I was, I was telling Jim that, I said, maybe instead of coffee, I'll have, like, that green Kool-Aid in a glass cup. So it looks like, because he's drinking his Mountain Dew is in a green bottle all the time. Um, green grit sounds incredible. And then Rebecca asks what my shirt says. It just says Ireland. Yes. It says, Ireland, I'm coming home. Um, I went to go, I went to go, um, place the order for St. Patrick's Day. I went to go buy an Irish soda bread from Walmart. It was $11. I said, I'll get baking soda because we have flour and I'm not getting, like, I'm not, I'll make my own. It's very, I can't believe how much money it is. I was like floored. We're obviously not putting raisins in it because we don't have any. Um, so we're just going to make a plain one, but. Who, ever, who decided to start putting raisins in Irish soda bread? Well, it's not that. There's always been 
variations. You can make it savory, like you could put cheese in it and seasonings, or you can make it sweet, but it's just that the popular, like it, it stuck because it was good. You know what I'm saying? Like putting raisins in soda bread when you're making a sweet one was the one that stuck. Like oranges were okay, cranberry, like whatever, but it was really the raisins that really stuck. That made it taste, taste better. I mean, you like raisin bread, so it's not like, mostly like cinnamon that's squirrel not, bread, but. That's not a true Irish bread. Dude. No, raisin bread's not, but soda, no, no, so, so Irish soda bread, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I have a friend um, who was from Ireland who was like, I said, um, do you have a soda bread recipe? Because I'd like to, I, I got one from my aunt, like my aunt Nora, my great aunt or whatever. And I always like to compare or try different ones. And she gave me uh, her Irish soda bread recipe, and she put Irish soda bread slash scones. So it's the same recipe as, like, scones. And just like scones, you can make them savory, you can make them sweet, yeah. put whatever you want in it, you know, kind of thing. So um, it's just a quick bread. You know, it's not like um, you don't need yeast. There's no, there's, a, there's baking soda in it, so I think baking powder, so there's leavening. But it's really just a quick bread um, that... Uh, mm. Yeah, but, you know, it's good. We like to have it. Um, one year, I know in New York when we were doing Weight Watchers, me and Janie, I made one regular one, and then I made one, like, I didn't make it gluten-free. I definitely made it, like, maybe whole wheat flour. Like, try to make it, like, healthier. Don't do that. What? It wasn't good. It wasn't. Oh. It, I mean, it was okay. It was bread. It was quick bread. I mean, quick bread's quick bread, but... It wasn't the same. It wasn't, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> because, um, I don't know what his religion is. My cousin is Jackie, my boy. Yeah, mom's he's, first cousin. Uh, yeah, he's your second, third, second, whatever. Like second that. cousin, yeah. Second cousin. Um, it was like Irish soda bread is just plain old, plain old fashioned bread. Oh, no, it's not. There's no yeast in it. Some um, your normal plain old fashioned bread has got yeast in it. Oh. So even sourdough, it doesn't have yeast in it, but it's got the fermentation that happens like yeast. But soda bread is just like like beer bread. It's just you know, you throw it together and you put it in the oven. Peasant bread, sometimes you hear it as peasant bread. Yeah. yeah. Um J D just messenger asked if we ch if you changed your P.O. Box for 94, he said uh, my package was returned. I don't have a P.O. Box anymore. We haven't had one. We only kept one for the first year I had cancer. Because um, a lot of people reached out to me that they wanted to send me cards. Sorry. Um, it was 91. It, it wasn't 94. It was 91. But we don't have it. We haven't had it for quite a while. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you want to email me, the email my email is in the description box down below. I can send you an address where to send it. Um, you know, so if you want to do that, you can. Um, but thank you. <laughs> Daisy um. says, Jimbo, you look pregnant. Hey, <laughs> it's a family tradition. His father, <laughs> and we won't go into that because he had a saying about that. What? But, um, that is an elephant. <laughs> Your dad used to say it was an elephant. Because it made noise like, Whoa. No, I'm kidding. I can't see your face, Mom. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh. You wouldn't want to be around my dad when he farted. Well, I don't remember that so much. Oh, there was one time after a good barbecue we had with the uh, <laughs> <Lee and> family. <laughs> that could be. Me and my dad used to argue. No, that was you. No, 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 that was you. Um, oh, well. I vividly remember looking under my parents, like, green velvet couch with the wood trim when I was little for the frog. My father used to tell me all the time there was a frog that crawled under the couch. Oh. And we were little and we used to look for the frog. It was floorboard. It was what? The floorboard. Floorboards? That's funny. <sighs> um, Ma'am? Thank you. What are you doing, baby? She dropped her bone, but she's... Look, this is what she does. See her ass in the air this whole time? Yeah, this is what she does. And then if I scratch it, she'll stretch it. Ugh. Or, or just freeze up. Oh, got the toe beans. She's got to go to the vet. We talked about, she's got a couple of things the vet needs to look at, but we also, um, she needs her, like, annual flea thingy. And I was out there this morning because there was some 
um, cellophane bags, like, uh, um... Like a bullet of somebody's garbage? No. Oh. The raccoons were back, basically. Oh, okay. I, I can't get my trash can, can closed all the way, so... Too much garbage, you mean? Or it doesn't have the clip on it like the last one did? No, too much garbage. Oh, okay. What um, happened? Did we forget to bring it out on t Monday? No. Oh, it's just been a whole week of you cleaning? Mm-hmm. Wow. But, um... Did you throw out stuff that you weren't supposed to throw out? I didn't throw out anything in order. Okay. Well, I didn't say that. No, I kept a lot of... I didn't say things. that. What I said was, did you throw anything out that didn't need to go into the landfill, as opposed to being donated? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you. It was all garbage and papers and... and okay. Boxes. Just not books or notebooks or any of those things. Those can all get reused I by people. I am not throwing out any of my books. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm that. just saying. <laughs> Making sure. Uh, what my oh my evidently is still blocked. What my oh my From is. Jim's chat. Obviously, she's not blocked here. What my oh my. What Why my oh my. Why would she be blocking your channel? I have no idea. Oh. Well, I'll look at that today. I'm not going to do it now because I was doing that for a long time last week. And that was like, uh, not a nice thing. Did you want lotion or something? Did you want me to do your nails? What's just holding hands? Just holding hands? Okay, we can hold hands. We can hold hands. That's all right. I love you. Unfortunately, we don't have a three mic system. Oh, they having trouble so hearing you? I I'm just said Jim should mind. have a microphone. Oh, Jim should have a microphone. Uh, the three mic system. So these ones, these two, hold on, let me put this on. Are literally like 20 bucks. Yeah. The three mic systems are like 80, 90, and I'm like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. like if we could have to, we would. If we could get a third receiver for one, we would, but um, put it a little closer to Jim. Maybe he can hear it. <laughs> Maybe you can hear him. Oh, don't bang the microphone because that's silly. Don't you, don't you bang that microphone. Wario is very in tune to me and Jerry. Um, she always comes to, to either one of us if the other is not feeling all that great. Oh, we found out this week because Jim and I were having like, Jim, okay, I'm not blaming you. I also wasn't feeling good. But something about this weekend made Jim's not feeling good turn to like impatience and irateness. Like, like starting arguments quickly, which we haven't done in a long time since he started that book and we started talking. So we were back and forth about like, and we were disagreeing loudly and she was like not having it <laughs> she, was, she was putting in her two cents <laughs> like stop and she was going to him and running to me and running to him and running to me and she was like this can't happen so um we learned that maybe arguing in front of the babies <laughs> i'm just kidding um but it was nice to see that she was there to protect the person who was getting yelled at and that's how it felt like it was like when the other person had the loud voice the person that wasn't talking she got got there got her attention which was kind of cool she was really good like that um we resolved it it's just that so the thing is and i'm not again i'm not blaming him but usually lately he's been much better to uh respond not react which is something he learned in therapy a long time ago but for something that happened this weekend it really got into his core and and triggered something so it became like we're not able to discuss this calmly so i Gave him some time to rest, and I was like, when you feel calm, come back and we'll talk. And as soon as he came back to talk, it started all over again. So I was like, well, you didn't really get calm then, I guess, or whatever. But he then shared with me that he didn't know what was going on in his in his body, and he wasn't feeling himself. So, um, mm -hmm. But it was just really nice to see her, um, you know, protect the person yeah. or respond to the person who was getting getting yelled at. Um, what well, Maya and I said, thank you. Sally, thank you, and yes, happy Irish day. I'm part Irish. <laughs> Scott's Irish. That's me. Uh, let's see. Oh, over ask, it, did you call the police on Cece? No. Put her, no. No, we, me and Jerry resolved it, so. Oh, because oh, that's what, oh, yeah. So, yeah, um, so it was, a, it was a misunderstanding that him and I had where he thought, we agreed on one thing, and I thought we agreed on the other thing. So, um, and that has a lot to do with, like, I guess not just Jim, but men in general don't really like to share, like, their feelings or talk their feelings out all the time. And 
I don't think he expressed his feelings to me <coughs> the way he thought he did, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I apologize for my part. Look, when you get some, no matter what your intention was, if you upset somebody, you should apologize because even if you weren't intending on making them upset, the fact that they reacted that way to something that you said, really, <laughs> sorry, the fact that they reacted negatively to something that you said, it does require you to say, I'm sorry, like, it's a, it's, I didn't mean for that to hurt you, oh, I didn't mean to upset you by that, I didn't mean to, that wasn't my intention, I'm really sorry that I upset you and you know, because even, even if you're just having a conversation and somebody takes something to heart, like you trigger something in them, it's definitely important to be like, look, I, I did not mean to make you upset. That was not my, you know, and th those types of things. So that was a big thing, too, because I didn't realize that it triggered something in him. And then it triggered something in me because, like, I was trying to explain how I felt. And he was like, but, but, but. And I was like, yeah, I know, but this is how I felt. This is what I thought. This is. And he was just like, argue, like you know, it was weird. So it was good that we resolved it. But I'm glad that he was finally able to, like, listen to me and focus. Like, I wasn't accusing him of anything at all. But I was just trying to explain my point, you know, my side. And it was really good. It was it was a good, bad situation. So, <coughs> um, Excuse me. Yeah. Someone's girl was here. Hello. Um, since with Karen, I have not had a touch of me in... Oh, wow. At least two weeks to a month. Does that have to go in the refrigerator? No, probably not, right? Or lay down? It doesn't have a cork. It's a screw no, top? it's a okay. screw top. As long no. as it's some, not some place um, where it's going to get from. No, if that name was a bottle from Norway. Yes, the dragon's blood. Oh, 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 oh. It doesn't yeah. need to be on its side. Want to lay down? Lay down. You can lay down and hold the pillow. Oh, no? Okay. Scary. You didn't want to hold the pillow? Oh, there's my girl. Are you going in time to go to sleep? So I jumped on to, uh, Jim was live streaming on Saturday, Saturday, Friday. Um, and somebody, no, I think it was yesterday. No, it couldn't okay. have been yesterday, right? I don't remember what day it was. No, because you talked about thought. it with mom yesterday. So it was Friday. Uh, what? About Diane's live stream. Oh. So I jumped on to, like, somebody came into Jim's live stream and said, did it bother you that mom was in the live stream? So I was like, I want to make sure it was really mom, because there's a lot of people who pretend to be mom. Um, so I was able to go and see that it was mom or whatever, but I was in there and then of course I got triggered into responding Because I realized something. Oh, I realized something. I don't care When it's brought to my face. I I want to react, but the thing is No matter what I do to explain my side or to correct the misconceptions They keep coming back Like somebody even brought up that I I give my dog pepperoni and that might as well be Twinkies. And I was like, I never gave my dog pepperoni in her life. I did used to give her the Dollar Tree treats because first of all, I, that was what I could afford. And second of all, I didn't know how bad they were for you. Now I only pick out the Dollar Tree treats that have meat as the first ingredient. And the only one that is, is the, the one that's like beef and chicken, beef and cheese. And that starts with chicken first, which is kind of funny. But, but even then, I don't get them anymore. Like I don't buy them for her anymore. So, but even if it is. And that, that being said, so I was like, I never, I don't buy them for her anyway. Bag and strips, we got those. Actually, um, somebody, I don't remember if I, I don't remember if I mentioned that it was your name or your screen name. So somebody who you know who you are in this live chat right now, um, gave us a, a gift card to Instacart. And I was able to buy her a huge bag of bag and strips. And they were like, woof, well received. Um, but I try now to like once a month, we try to get her a better snack. She was getting, um, bark box from, uh, for six months. We did a six month thing and it came with train treats and morning breakfast treats. And she loved some of those. There's a one that's like wakey wakey and it's oatmeal and maple syrup. Uh, it's bacon and oatmeal, but it smells like maple syrup. And she loved, I know I'm just talking about, it. I'll stop talking about food. <laughs> you want to go see Eves? And the other thing I had to, I had to, um, oh, that being said, if you can only afford Dollar Tree treats, people shouldn't be shamed for being able to treat their dog to something a little different than just kibble. And nobody should be ashamed of it. It's like only being able to afford macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. There is no shame in that, as long as you're being fed. 
as long as your children are being fed. There's no shame in that. So don't shame people for what they can afford to feed themselves or eat. Okay, because that's ridiculous. I'm not having that. The second thing is, that's my dog. I know my dog. I hear, I heard a, I heard a comment that dogs don't need to lay down for a nap. They sleep when they want to sleep. Well, here's the truth. This dog will not mm -hmm. sleep in this room. She falls asleep, and as soon as a, a, a mouse 65 feet away in the grass moves, she's up. So she does need to go lay down in a crib, which we call her cat, her pen, which is her crib. And it needs to be covered, and it needs to have sound music on, and it needs to have puppy music on. Because it keeps her from being distracted, and she can actually rest. Now, I don't know if you ever met a dog that is cranky when they don't rest, because <laughs> they can't. I don't know if it's anxiety or if it's just a, her alertness or her breeds that she's on high alert all the time for the little critters. But she does not rest. If this, We know because we've had it for a year and this isn't something we started in the beginning. This is something we've learned over the times. So that being said, again, stop. Because not all, everybody's journey is not the same. Every dog is not the same. Every breed of dog is not the same. Every individual dog is not the same. Every family is not the same. Everybody's family routine is not the same. Just like people's kidney cancers are different and people's cancer journeys are different. We're all different and we're all unique. And people have to stop getting in everybody's face and telling them what they should and shouldn't do, what they could and couldn't do, and telling them that whatever their opinion is, all these armchair doctors, telling them what their opinion is about their lives. And this is ridiculous. Like, we have to stop. This is not a Christian way of life. Christians, there's actually a whole passages like all about about gossiping in in the Bible, and you like some Christians really want to like quote Bible and live Bible, but they just go ahead and judge and gossip and all these things. And I'm like, no, it's pretty much not in the Bible for you to judge and gossip. I'm just saying. That being said, <laughs> this is our journey, our life, and if you're welcome to come and share it with us when we share it with you. But really, and, and another thing is too because. The thing with the pepperoni was, I learned from you guys that the food, those treats weren't great. And then I looked it up and I found out those treats aren't great. If they don't have meat as the first ingredient, then, you know, try not to give it to her. So that's why we changed. And the fact that we changed and people are still judging us from what we did a year ago, that's where I have a problem. And that's where I had a problem on, Saturday, on Friday night. Because no matter what I say or do, no matter how I change or improve, I'm going to get called out on something that I was called out on three years ago. So why? Why bother? I actually said to Jim, I would love to do like an interview. Just have her like, you know, we'll both be on our own lives and just sit and be like, you tell me what you think and then I will tell you what happened or you tell me your opinion. I'll put it back in context because a lot of stuff that they talk about is out of context stuff. And just like, I'll, so I'll put it back in context. And then I realized it's not going to make a difference. There's like 20, no, I'm at 25 times. I'll be real, I'll be for real, real. There's like three or four or five times I've actually tried to make this explanation. Like I have saved, just because I deleted it off the Instagram, an entire screenshot of conversation that I tried to have to explain stuff for her. I'm, I'm not upset, baby. It's okay. To um, explain to her everything that she was misunderstood. And she, she took it back and made it into more content. So I'm like, why am I even bothering? That's why for the last six or seven months, Everybody's saying, she's doing this, she's doing that. I'm like, I really don't care. And I really didn't care. Honestly, if it wasn't just that somebody looked like they were still trying to start trouble by saying mom was in the live stream that made me go over there, that triggered me, I wouldn't have even. Like, I don't even look. When people are like, oh, she did this with you. I'm like, I don't care. Just let her do whatever she's got to do. Whatever she got to do is about me, you know? But anyhow, um, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was weird and triggering, but... Like, like many things that trigger you, you realize you're triggered. And then you're like, why am, I, why am I in this situation that's triggering me? Why am I in this toxic situation? Get out of this toxic situation as soon as possible. But, thank God, it wasn't me. Jim walked in, and he goes, why are you even on there? Because I was, was I talking to Tex where you heard me responding, right? I so, so I was talking to Tex, and he came in the room. He's like, why are you even on there? And I was like, okay, close it. <laughs> so I put it away. And... Later, he was like, I didn't tell you to get off there. I was like, well, the way you said what you said and the tone you said it 
made me feel like you were telling me to get off of there. So he didn't say get off of there. He was like, the way he said, why are you even on there? It made me feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be on here. And I like left it. So that was a misunderstanding. But I'm glad he did because I probably just would have been on there and just been like pissed all night and not slept and not been able to do any of that stuff. So that's why you got to watch out for your partner, you know. That's why we got to watch out for each other. Are you ready to go sleep in the crib? Oh, you're just going to lay here for a little bit? Okay. Maybe if she falls asleep, you guys can see what I'm talking about when the first little, like, and she run, Yeah, the she door runs door. over the door and it's howling. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see, see bees, mommy, right? Oh, so see bees, want a pillow? Want put the pillow? Oh, put your head on the pillow? Want put your head on the pillow? Um, so, yeah, and I'm not trying to be here and ranting about it because, again, there's, like, I don't really usually put any energy into this anymore. Because um, I really don't have... Pardon? Oh, okay. Because I really don't have energy to, to give for it. But, um, yeah, it's just... Ah, you know? Um, oh, you want the pillow back? You don't want the pillow? Is there anything? I'm done, so... Got lots of things to respond to, or it's just... Conversation happening in the background? No, it's not a conversation okay. in the background. It's just, um, go ahead, Mom. Go ahead, what? You read faster than Jim. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, somebody said that uh, Diane and I are friends. We're not really friends. We're not friends. I watch her channel to keep up with what she's saying. Not that it does make a whole lot of difference, but uh, I sometimes I get a good laugh out of it. Uh, too ridiculous to even uh, reply to. Um, sometimes I try to set the record straight. Um, that's basically it. Because I, I started out, well, it started out with something totally different a, couple, a year or so ago when mm -hmm. uh, I was getting those stupid cards. Yes. Because uh, I thought it was might have come from Diane. I don't know, not Diane herself. Yeah, I don't think so, channel. but I was trying to look for some clue. Huh. There are things going on in the background, too, that there is somebody who is has been on Diane's channel, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, who has, I think, sold a bill of goods to Jim, maybe Jerry, about... Uh, sorry that she ever went to Diane's channel, but she's doing stuff behind the scenes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. She's and you doing... know that because you've seen them in the, ch in the, ch in the chat? Yeah. Or... yeah. Um, you can tell us. I mean, I don't, it's, I, it, I mean, it's, I, here's the thing, and I know that this has come up a lot. I've never, I don't block anybody. Only reason I don't block anybody, and I'm telling you this, is because I don't do my comments anymore. I don't do my comments online, and I don't do my comments in the comments. Um, so if somebody's being toxic or mean, I don't have the opportunity to block them anymore. And the second thing is, like, even if my moderators feel like you're being toxic, then go ahead and block them. That's fine. But usually I have, like, I'm, I'm usually like, tell me what they said because it may seem toxic to you, but it may not seem toxic to me. Like, asking the question for the 97th time drives Jim crazy. She's already explained that she's got stage 4 cancer and how it's stage 4 and what the da da but to me, I don't care. If you need me to explain it to you again, I will. I have no problems with that. But <laughs> I got a comment like, as soon as I went on the live the other day, she was like, well, you notice that you're on my live, but I, I'm blocked on yours. Yeah, because I'm not toxic on your live. The only thing I ever do that's slightly, not toxic even, just like angry, is that I just get defensive of what you're saying about me. But you come on and you call me like a liar and a fraud. and I mean, that's, that's, toxic. I'm not having that. And that's okay with me if you're not back on. But the time that she thought that I blocked her, she's like, I have proof. And I have proof to you that same conversation. I pointed to Jim. That's the lady who made the video for me today. And she was like, she got blocked since then. And I'm like, well, that wasn't me blocking her. I didn't even say block her. I said, that's the lady who made the video today. So, like, even her proof is not right proof, you know. But with as far as mom's concerned, she actually does, like, stuff comes up and then mom will address it with us because we don't know. Like, in the live the other night, what makes Jim and Jerry think they'll go outside when they don't go outside now? Well, we went outside when we first moved here quite a lot. I used to sit on the front porch often. Uh, you guys have seen me vlog from the front porch or the back porch. 
but it's old and the neighbors don't live there anymore and things are different here. It's going to be a new environment that we have to explore. Of course we're going to go out. You know, like at this point, Jim's bored of the place here. Even though we haven't explored everything, we've done a lot of exploring and we've gone out plenty. And that's the only reason, like, so that was okay that you said it because she was like, I have no idea, so then we could talk about it. But you, you can ask us that. What makes you think you're going to go out when you're there and not go out when you're here? And I'm like, well, first of all, there's no mountains here. You have to go really, really far to go to the mountains. Jim likes the mountains. We're talking about moving a place that's on the mountain, like, not on the mountain, but there's the mountain. Like, and, oh, look, there's Pikes Peak. That's only about... Oh, 20 minute drive. Let's yeah, go, it's like going to Walmart. Yeah. It's like going to Walmart. Let's go to the mountain or Walmart. Like that's, you know, but, um, but anyhow, so these things come up and uh, it's not a mind that mom goes on there because then if it brings up something that we need to talk about, we can talk about it because she, they, they're not allowed on my channel because of their toxicity and they're not asking, even if they think they're asking a question politely. The fact that they're going back on their channel and 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 disputing everything that I said for whatever reason, that's not polite. If you ask somebody a question, they tell you the truth, whether or not you believe them. If you turn around telling them they're lying, it's just not, no, who wants that in their life? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just... So, go ahead, I'm sorry. Quickly, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, no, that's fine. I just put somebody in time out because that person was not only calling my mother... Which I've known all my life. I've never known her to lie. A liar. A back... You know, basically she's... You know, saying that my my mom is lying about the stuff that she talked about on, on Diane's channel. I don't believe that to be true. Well, that's why I went on the live stream. To make sure that it was actually mom-mom. And not yeah. somebody... There were several moms out there. There were several Sally, Sally Hansons out there with SH trying to be like mom. And you can go back and tell by their email address that it's not her, it's her, or whatever. So go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mark. Uh, Roberta Spell said I said I lock up my meds. I don't recall ever saying that because right now they're sitting in a basket in my office. Well, if you know where to look. Well, we lock up the meds for a while. I don't know that <coughs> Excuse that's me. exclusively you. Right. I did I lock up, up the code, the, yeah, the Tylenol with codeine, codeine so for a while. Out the door. So if that's what you mean by yeah. that. Okay, she said her meds. Oh. So I said, I yeah. said I locked up my meds. Well, when Jim went to the hospital, we got instructions to lock up all the medication. I had to buy a lockbox for our medication. But now Jim distributes the medication out of lockbox, so it's not an issue anymore. So just because you had to do something two years ago doesn't mean you still have to do it. It doesn't make you a liar. Just because you were on a diet two years ago and you're not on a diet now doesn't mean you were lying about your diet two years ago. That type of thing, that, that's what bothers me, like. People are people, and they change, and they, they develop. You know, perfect example. All, less than a year ago, we talked about moving. I didn't even bring it until July. Like, Lisa moved, and I was like, you know what? It's, it's warmer there, and I kept thinking about Vegas and how our arthritis was better, and I was like, I that, that plan when we first moved, Mom was going to get this her own place there, and we were going to get our own place over there, still within, like, driving distance. She was still driving at the time. Not as much, but every once in a while she still felt comfortable getting in the car. Now, things have changed. And it's not like she lied back then, and we didn't lie back then. But things change. Situations change, and you have to go with it, because we're just human beings. This isn't a scripted television show. This isn't a soap opera. <laughs> this is not, you know, this is just life, and life changes as it goes. You learn, and you, you improve, and you, and you make plans to fix the plans, and those types of things. They just keep going, you know, like it's life. I don't, you know, it's the part I don't life, get. That, that's the thing about life. It's ever-changing. Yes. You can think, you know, hey, yeah, I'm going to wake up and things are going to be the way it was today. But you wake up in the morning and you realize, nope, something's changed. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's the weather, whether it's your attitude, whether it's just in general, things change. The problem I have with a lot of people, and I'm starting to see it here on, on today's live, is you're not listening to what we're saying and you're assuming mm -hmm. that we lock up our medicine. Still. No, we don't. Yeah, exactly. 
The only thing we lock up, and I realized after CC's entrance into my home, was I need to keep my house locked up. Yeah. yeah. And that wasn't just about CC. Just CC pointed out that anybody could walk in if the doors are locked when we're all napping. The reason that was an, a, a problem was because Jim was in his office. I was in my, I was basically almost asleep and Oreo was asleep and mom was taking her nap. So like nobody was here. So normally that's not something we do. Like we lock up our house at night. We usually lock up the house when nobody's in the room, but we just did it, you know? So that was what that was about. Um, the other thing is, it's my favorite song of all time. It's called The River by Garth Brooks. And there's a line that says, a dream is like a river ever changing as it flows. That's the line. So just because you dream, like Jimmy and I dreamed about having a bed and breakfast before we started YouTube. And then we were like, oh, let's just take like an RV and go to all these people's different locations. And at the time it was okay because mom was feeling good and she could take care of herself and left out of the house herself. But now it's a different story. If we went on an RV trip for a week, we might come back and she might be like emaciated and floating <laughs> up the window or something like some I'd be things. warm. And she'd be warm, but you know, I'd get some she'd things be broiled, done. Right? But it's just sort of like, it's sort of like things have to evolve. People change and things evolve and plans evolve and those types of things. I miss crafting people like, you should just do simple crafts. No, you don't understand. It's not even that I, I miss creating, but crafting myself, like between my, my, my muscle weakness and my eyesight and everything, it's like, I can't even, like, it would take me like a whole day's energy just to clean the table up. And then a whole next day's energy just to gather supplies. And then a whole next day's energy and uh, to be honest with you, I have, I'm having trouble editing and uploading because I have like, I don't know, 75 hours worth of vlogs and crafts and live stream, I'm uh, not live streams and um, cooking tutorials on my, on my phone that have not been uploaded because I have trouble I'm having these troubles and I need like, I need help, but it's not some help that Jim can give me because he doesn't do the things that like editing, he doesn't do all that in his videos. Um, so it's like. They're just sitting there and why I don't craft. I actually have a beginning of a craft video from 2021 before I was diagnosed. I painted a tray and I just never finished the video and X, Y, and Z happened and you know, um, yeah. So there's a lot of things like I really want to like, I would love to be able to address and, and like explain, but listen, there's no point because you're going to, people are going to believe what they want to believe. If they already feel, if they already feel one way about somebody, they're always going to see them through those glasses. If you think somebody's lazy, everything they do is because you're looking at them through lazy glasses. Despite whether or not they're lazy, just because you felt that they were. So, um, and this goes back to like, when I first started my video, I realized that my first negative comment response video was in like, I started my channel December of 16 and my first like negative response video was like April of 17 like only like five months in I had somebody attacking me with all the wrong uh, pre presumptions all the wrong presumptions oh why are you spending your social security money on this this is I, was, I wasn't getting social security in 2000 you know 17 I was like I don't know what you're talking about so people think that they know and then they assume and then they go ahead from that and they see you from those eyes for the rest of their existence. Nothing that you'll ever do or say can change their mind about how they feel about you. So, I know a lot of what's come up in the last three or four years is because Jim and I contradict each other on our vlogs or our channels. But the big thing that you have to remember is, as far as kidney cancer and stuff is concerned, that's my journey. He's a witness to my journey. I tell him what I tell him and he remembers what he wants to remember and he focuses on things he wants to focus. So if you have one person saying one thing, go to the person who's the source. And I'm not trying to throw you under the bus or anything. It's not even about that. But I was like, Jim, why are they believing you and not me? And I realized it's because what Jim was saying was following their narrative of how they felt about me. That I was lazy and entitled and just whatever. And I got that. Like, I felt that sense very quickly. Um, so, that was sort of a, like a thing that had to play in my head. And I'm like, why are they not believing me? Because I'm the person, I met every doctor's appointment. I met every exam. I met every test. I met every, you know, like, I'm there the whole time. 
I read my reports. I give the reports to Jim and he reads and he will like read them and be like, well, what does this mean? And I'll have to explain to him what it means. So why are you going to him for the information and believing him when it's my story? You know, come to me. If you have a question, come to me and ask me to explain what he meant by what he said. Like when he didn't realize that just because my tumor shrank, that didn't mean I went from stage four to stage three. That just meant I went from a smaller tumor. It's called reg a regression of disease. Uh, so that's all. It's was that's all it was, and all my tumors didn't go away. My tumors <coughs> didn't <coughs> retract from being like far away metastases, or many, 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 many metastases. It's just that the tumor in my kidney shrank a substantial amount during that first round. But he didn't know that that's what that meant. He didn't know that because I was getting better, or the tumor was shrinking, that I didn't go back in stages. So he didn't understand that, but he does now. You know, like we had to explain it. But, you know, it's the way it is. And I get a lot of, like, I got a lot of, like, why are you always throwing Jim under the bus? Or why are you always blaming him when you get called out on something? And I'm like, well, because you're not calling me out on something I said. You're calling me out on something he said. So if he said something wrong, I'm going to say Jim said something wrong. Like, well, I don't understand what, what that, that is. And I realized it's because it's playing into their narrative that I'm full of shit. And I'm a fraud and all these things. Now she's probably going to take these words, right? As I'm saying, I'm full of shit and I'm a fraud. And she's going to make that her new thumbnail. No, I'm kidding. But that's what the narrative is that they're feeling. That, that I am lazy and the liar and the manipulator and all these things. So when you see the, when it fits the narrative, that's when you're going to go in and just think that's the way it is. Anyhow, I'm done. <laughs> Rant over. It's not really rant. I'm just like okay, okay. trying to explain like what the heck, you know? God, I'm, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. A no, lot no. of these I was reading them myself because they seem to be more towards me, and I did try to answer or mom. some of them. Oh, okay, I was like, mom can read if she. <coughs> um, well, and she caught up and. I mean. Um, how far back do you want me? Oh, I was just if there was any questions. They were asking if you were still friends with CC. I, I am. That's the, that was what the miscommunication was with me and Jim. Jim mm. didn't know that CC and I still talk to each other. Mm. And, and he thought we was, she was like, just because I fired her, she was cut off. But no, I, that was not the case. So that was a big part of what the misunderstanding was the other day, yeah. Okay. In fact, Kayla is CC's sister, and she's the one I got the parade video from. So, okay, sorry, I thought my watch needs to be correct. Uh. Yeah, if people put things out in public, they should answer the questions put forth to them. Yeah. Not sweep it on, under the rug. And now what? Not sweep it under, under the rug. Yeah, I, I actually said to Jim, the only lie I've ever told to my husband is a lie of omission. And because he doesn't take things very well, and I won't, like, lie for months. It's just, like, I have to, he has to deal with what he's dealing with right now before I can throw the other thing at him. And... I know that that's not good, but it's also not good to turn your husband into, like, mental illness or having a mental breakdown, you know, like. Oh, no, men, mental illness, I'm already there. But you realize, like, that's why I corrected my words, yeah, because because it's not really a good idea to trigger your husband into a mental a mental breakdown. Um, question is, ahead, why didn't they send you another aid? Why didn't they? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I found CC from one of the companies, um, the program is called Consumer Direct Services, which is basically, I can hire any friend, a family member, except my husband, um, my parent, my child, my brother, sister, anybody. I don't have anybody here in Rolla that I could have reached out to, so they found her for me. Well, currently, they don't have anybody waiting to work. Um, so that's the problem. I don't have... A person to hire and they don't have anybody to send me um, so we're in kind of in limit, kind of waiting they were thinking they're actually going to close my case uh, because it's been so long without services but I don't know what to do I don't have anybody I can hire for the position um, so it's I'm kind of like stuck you know um, so we're trying to figure out exactly what to do next um, that's that's where we're at and they were trying to switch me over to a different program called in-home services, which basically would be like they hire the person. Like, like right now, it's like I hire her. 
and they hire the person, but the problem is I get services seven days a week, and they don't have anybody who can work seven days a week. They usually only have people with Monday through Friday. But at this point, I'll, be like, I'll take Monday through Friday, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But um, because I'm not currently actively in treatment, I don't feel terrible. Like, I could take a shower by myself, and other than Jibby washing my back because of my wounds, like, that's the only thing. Um, I can get in and out and dry myself and, you know, he's, he cooks breakfast anyway, like kind of thing, and he makes dinner anyway, and sometimes if I feel good enough, I'll help with dinner or whatever, but, you know, I don't know that I necessarily need somebody seven days a week right now. When they interviewed me, I was active in treatment, and I was exhausted, and we didn't know the, thyroid, the thyroid was bad until, you know, midway through or whatever, so, yeah, um, that's, that's where we're at with that. Everybody likes Jim's hat. I love Jim's hat. He's really cute. I like him enough. That's called a fedora mom that cut, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a few of those. He's got like a black one, a gray one. And then I have I have a plaid one, which is really cute too. But I like him in those cut, cuts of hat. He looks really, really handsome. I mean, he's handsome anyway, but. And he's it's big on him. I don't see that it's big on you. If you pull it down over your eyes, will it be? But it no, looks like it fits good. Tight, but... Oh, tight. Oh, I thought you said it's too big when you came out of the kitchen. Maybe you meant your head was a little big. Is that what um. you meant? Or did you mean small one? Because yeah, you said it was a little big. It, it, it felt a little big. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Jerry, you got rid of your pain pills, so no pain, that's great. I got rid of my pain pills, so no pain, that's great. Well, evidently, I think the feeling is you got rid of your pain pills, so you're not in pain, which who, is great. Who said I got rid of my pain pills? I don't know. This comes from Virginia Slims. <laughs> um, I currently don't have any on me right now. I could still get them. Uh, I am in pain, but I take regular Tylenol as per my oncologist because the Tylenol coating causes me to have severe stomach issues. Like I really get really constipated, which then ends up causing me to have back pain, which is weird. When my, in, when my intestines are full, it pushes on the tumors. It hurts my kidney, it hurts my middle back. So it's kind of like counterproductive to take the Tylenol and codeine. Evidently. Tylenol arthritis, and I also take, um, next, uh, not Nexium, what's it called? Aleve, basically, it's naproxen sodium, that's what I was trying to remember. I take Aleve twice a day. Um, but no, I'm, I have flares of pain, and I can hurt myself just like anybody else. Yeah, I'm in pain. But again, if you guys have been around, around a while, I've, I've had, like, bad knees since I'm 23, I think. I've had arthritis, you know, diagnosed arthritis since I'm like 24. You know, so I'm, I'm in pain all the time, but I just live with it, so. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, I do, currently don't have any kind of with Comed on me, um, but that doesn't mean I may never need it again. Evidently, I must have said something about you not taking them. Yeah. I right. do not remember saying that we got rid of them. Yeah, we don't have them. I just didn't refill the so, prescription. So. But I'm going to say that if I did, I'm sorry because either A, I said it the wrong way or B, someone took it the wrong way. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I currently don't have any in the house. So that's if I need them, I can go get to CVS and get them. The doctor didn't DC the prescription or discontinue the prescription. That's what I guess what, what the question is really that needs to be answered. I feel like there was something going up. Oh, so I originally, when I, when I left the city doctors, which is the orthopedist oncologist and the spine surgeon, they were like, I don't want to see you for a year. But then I got like my last test results and now my spine guy wants to see me in May. So I usually take a panel of coding on the spine surgery day. The day before and then whatever because it's a lot on my body and just to get through those two appointments all that long period of time plus the long drive it i need to um however um it's only the one doctor this time so i'm kind of like do i drive is he gonna drive am i gonna drive there and he's gonna drive home you know i could take one with me and then i could take it on the way home because if he drives home then you know what i mean so it's kind of like that when is this um uh, may in may and we don't even know if we'll be here, but... I was about to say, uh, I'm not going to be here in May. From hell or high if, water. I said if, don't yell at me. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So, that's what, yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, oh, um, hold on. Okay. Something about... 
Prepper with my name says, this isn't being mean, but do you think it might be your weight? I'm not too sure, that, too sure what that's about. About arthritis or my pain? I mean, okay. it's hard to know because I've always been overweight. Like, and I have always been this overweight. I've always been morbidly obese. There was a very short period of time that I had gotten down to 250 pounds um, when I was doing the Dick Gregory Bohemian diet. Um, and that was only for like six or eight months when I was 23. But I was never, I've never been thin. 220, 250 pounds was what I graduated from high school at. Um, actually, it was 289 pounds when I graduated from high school, but 250 pounds was the lowest I got, which I was like, I guess like playing volleyball. So maybe like a sophomore in high school. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to say because my muscles are used to carrying this weight. But really, I know I have bad knees. Arthritis runs in my family. Um, like even my skinny grandma had arthritis, her poor little knuckles. You know, um, but the the knees I know are because I played softball for so long, and I was a catcher. I just like like catchers, all catchers, softball, baseball, lifelong catchers always have bad knees because not your body's not supposed to squat sixty thousand times in a day. And I I say sixty thousand times like I'm exaggerating, but if you practice and then play a game, it's a, it's a lot. The minimum you squat. Is if it's three strikes and you're out, right? And there's three outs during an inning and there's nine innings, right? So that's three, six, nine, nine times nine is 81. 81 squats per game. Technically, it's you have to add one because you have to squat down every time a guy comes to back. But I'm just saying 81 squats per game, and that's just the games. And that's just the games that have a no hitter, complete strikeouts, nothing. Like never throw a ball, just strike, 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 strike. So do that over the course of 20 years, <laughs> you know, and not include practices because practices is way more squatting than practices. Um, and then, of course, there's really more squatting in a game. So it's just it, your body's not meant to do that. So when I say 10,000 squats a day, it's not really 10,000. It's my exaggeration number, but it's a lot. Um, if you're a gardener or a person who lays tile or d does flooring work, you guys know that knees are delicate and tender and they really aren't supposed to be worn that way but no I guess carrying the weight doesn't help um my dad actually was really tall and was heavy and he really didn't have bad knees and he used to carry like bags of stuff he used to carry like god when he got sick he used to tell me all the things that he used to do when his body broke down he was like oh I remember carrying 150 pounds of cement up a ladder when he was doing construction, and he would have 50 pounds over this shoulder, uh, 100, 100 pounds over this shoulder and 50 pounds over this shoulder, and trying to climb up the ladder with the left hand or whatever, and he, you know, and he never had bad knees, and he was 300, almost 400 pounds at some times, and um, like I said, uh, arthritis, his hands were all full of arthritis, and his shoulders and stuff, but never his knees, kind of wild. Um, so it's, it's, it's all... It's all how, I guess, how you use it, really, because how you carry it. Um, and even after I was a ball player, I, when I would go out clubbing, I would continuously drop it like it's hot. That was my move back in the 90s. Totally 100%. 100%. Not joking. Like, you can ask my family and friends. <laughs> the only time I, and when I, heard, when I tore my meniscus back in 2011, the doctor, I said, I did a dance game doctor. I was like, don't dance anymore. That's all Jim heard. There's no more dancing for Terry. I went to my um, cousin's 50th birthday party, and I was like, I'm going to go dance. He's like, doctor said no dancing. Okay. Um. I was what? Are you triggered? Do you want me to change the channel? Do you want me to get off? No, I don't okay. want you to get off. Said, hi. Um. I know he's upset. It's okay. He's okay. Daddy's upset. It's okay. I was going to ask. Go ahead. You said you were writing a book on your on your live? I am not really writing a book. I am studying from a book and writing down a lot of information. I am also journaling. Um, I had thought of writing, you know, writing a book of my own. Um, we well, wrote many short stories for me in, in the, the future. Years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm actually thinking about writing, going back to writing because it's only a lot of books. Um, you okay? 
I know Daddy got so upset. I'm so up. I'm actually upset because a lot of new names that have popped up within this video is starting to trigger well, me. Could you, because could you just tell me what they're saying instead of like getting upset about it? Stop well, internalizing it, I guess is what I mean. Okay. A lot of it's just nonsensical. Like, I don't know where they're coming up with, with the, some of this stuff. Well, explain it. Um, that's, well, what, that's what one of the things that somebody was saying before about why you sweep it on the rug and answer the question. So let's answer the question. We don't sweep anything on the rug. That's what I was saying. Let me go back. I won't tell you my sex life or my private life, so don't ask me about that because that's just rude. Okay, let me go back to it. Here we go. Uh, JD was asking, Jim, I'm a Christian. I don't know why you said it wasn't. I never ever said anything bad about you to anyone. Um, JD, I don't know where that's coming from, um, so forgive me, um. How do you know if that's right, JD, because there was like a few JDs. Yeah, there was yeah. a couple okay. JDs there. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just going with who's here. Oh, I, no, no, I don't um, mean, like, how do you know that that, that's here is the right JD? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay, gotcha. Um, I will say this much, um, I was born and raised a Christian. My parents had, uh, well, my mom was. Presbyterian? My parents were Presbyterian. Uh, actually, well, my mother's. We were raised Presbyterian. So, yeah. mom, was, yeah. mom was raised Presbyterian. My father was raised Catholic. When they got married, they went just for straight up Christian. Yeah, they Your dad wasn't family. really raised Catholic. His family was? Baptist, I believe. Oh, okay. Pentecostal Baptist. Um, oh, really? So I was raised in a Christian family. Now, when my father and three other family members died within 16 months of each other, I had a lot of unanswerable questions and nobody could really help me with that. And there was a lot of misleading information from my family. So I decided to explore the various religions, both Christian and non-Christian. Now, I came up with Wick, or not Wick, excuse me, Native American shamanism because of books I was reading. Now, I, I don't know how to, just, I don't really know how to describe this because a lot of you are going to probably get triggered and I really don't care. Um, yes, I believe in God. I believe in Christianity, but I also know of other deities and other ways of life. A lot of people get mad at me when I say I'm Wicca because I use natural ingredients. Well, so, pagan. You're not really yeah, Wicca. Okay, yeah, right, right. pagan. Because I use natural elements of the earth for my practice, for what I do. And then I said to you, that's you, how Christianity starts. Exactly. And I, mean, I was raised Catholic where they do incense at every dance. Like, they burn incense at every mass over the Holy Hill. Right. So it's like... You know? <laughs> so, like, I mean, I'm not saying that I am or am not Christian. I am, well, I am my own person. Now, if I do I, if I do anything to harm people, I mean, really physically harm them, yeah. then yeah, we can debate the right and wrong of, wh uh, of what I'm doing. Um, my lifestyle is pure, simple, and good. I don't try to harm anybody. I don't try to, to push people around. No. Lead them down your path. Like, yeah. you know, I'm showing you my journey, and if it's something that aligns with you, then you can welcome on my journey. But I'm not trying right. to push you into Christianity. I'm not trying to push you into Wicca or paganism or whatever. You know, I'm not trying to push you into being Catholic. You know, type of thing. I don't want we do, we do know that, and that's something that Jim and I have learned over the years of learning about Christianity, is that we do know that, it's, it's definitely gotten a lot twi more twisted than it was intended. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to start a whole biblical verse Bible issue like we're going to have this whole conversation. But it's just that things have changed over time. And like, I always questioned the Bible verbatim because it wasn't written down 
for hundreds of years. And I was like, that's like the world's old, longest game of telephone. Like, I tell you a story, and then you tell her a story. Mm. And how did we not lose stuff in the translation right. for hundreds of years before it was actually written down? Plus, then it was written down, it was changed, and, and then we had to, like, uh, if this language had to change into this language, and, like, this language and this language are not really compatible, so how do we do that? And then we have to change it into this language, and then what do we have to fill in the gaps? And So, yes, the, the written by man, inspired by God, 100%. I have learned a lot about Jesus in the red letters, and none of it is none of it is ever angry or hostile, except when he was at the temple flipping the money tables. So that's the one thing I could see that he's against is capitalism. But in the United States, let's go ahead and say Jesus is a capitalist, because that makes you feel better. Anyway, <laughs> anyhow, the whole like would take out what convenient when they have the ecumenical council and then they have the second ecumenical council where they can take out the books that they don't think align with our theology and we decide that they're not lore and then we take out gospels that we don't think are lore and that make Jesus more human and just those types of things. I've learned too much to realize that man worked, did have way too many hands in the, book, in, in, the in the mix there. So that being Stay said, book. what? Stay a stapler? Yeah, I'm talking too much. What does a stapler have to do with it? To staple your mouth shut. Whatever. Sorry, I thought this was Jerry and vlogs. I'm sorry, I'll stop talking. No, go ahead then. If that's what it's no, gonna. I was. It's not even that's what it's gonna be. What does that even mean? I have a lot of input too. Go ahead, put it in. Say what you were saying. That's fine. I just. Um, my thoughts gone anyway, so. Um, Roberta Spell, um, I've seen a lot of comments from you that um, I don't really approve of. Yes, her weight might have a lot to do with her arthritis, but since you don't know her history and what all you did, or all she did, I should say, I believe that most of her arthritis is because when she was younger, she was very active. She was very active when I met her in New York. Oh, yeah. She did a lot of running around in New York with her job. Um, in fact, if anything, and I don't want to, I don't want to say that I'm better than Jerry Ann because that's not the truth. Right now, because of her health, I'm the one doing all the running around and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, for the one person who made a comment earlier about my gut, about my <laughs> belly, saying that I'm fat, and those of you who said that I've, I'm lazy, you have no clue. It's genetics. This right here is a combination of genetics and well fed. Because when I was a kid, I was thin as a rake. It's Jim's father was skinny until he was 16. He used to laugh when somebody said something about his belly or whatever. He said, well, it's the only thing that's paid for. Um, so, no, his, I, I've seen that going, oh, you're looking more and more like your dad. Uh, no, nah, he's just, it's genetics. Yeah. Like and I, that being said, so what? I so could show you. Let him have a dad by 53. Yeah. Let him have a dad by 53. It's bothering me. Why is it bothering you? I've got the perfect dad bod. I got the belly. I got the beard. Jim never was like uh, into physical fitness. He played like just in high school in school, right? Like you didn't he didn't run in, on any int intramural teams or no. He yeah. he was in t-ball for one summer or yeah, whatever. When he was young, I think that's because of his eyesight at the time. Yeah. Eyesight. He was he was having troubles. So it's not like so I I was never thin but I was physically fit. The only problem I ever had was running. And I know now it's because I I had chronic bronchitis when I was younger, living with all the smokers and in the mold and stuff. But I never I could do a fifty yard dash and that's it. I couldn't do anything more than fifty yards. I didn't run to home base, maybe do a double and then I'd have to catch my breath. But that's about lung capacity. So now you have to ask yourself, smart ass. Do I have arthritis because I'm fat, or do I have, am I fat because I have arthritis? Do I have trouble breathing because I'm fat, or am I fat because I've always had trouble breathing? This is what you need to really, really think about, and not just answer. Don't just go with the, 
what everybody in the world thinks. We're learning. <coughs> <coughs> We're learning more and more every day. Like 20 years ago, did you ever hear about anybody being insulin resistant? <coughs> and now they're knowing more and more kids that are overweight when they're young are born genetically with insulin resistance. And that's causing them to put on weight because they can't process carbohydrates properly. So it's like, you have to ask yourself, just learn. Stop just assuming, stop going but what they knew back 1952. Just one, can I help you? You want me to stop talking to you? Okay. Patty's turn. Hi. Right. That's on the floor. Oh, this one. That's one. Well, Roberta, some of your comments were triggering me. Some of the comments about my wife triggered me. I do not approve of people, um, Alright, I, I don't approve of people, you know, who want to sit there and watch us. Watch us others. Or, or anything like that, and want to make comments about us without even knowing. Your comments about being a liar, or a scam artist, or stuff like that, who? that right there. Who? No. Who's a liar and a scam artist? We are. What am I scamming? Other people for money, you know, oh. I don't know. Okay. But the thing is, what gets I'm doing really well too, aren't I? The thing is, that started with Diane. Well, it started before Diane. And it started it with a bakery. But yeah, it started with the bakery. But Diane really got it going. No, the thing is, and I will give her this. Kudos. Kicking it. People like this kicking person. It. Kicking since, it. Wicking is on. Okay. Just came on. People like this, whatever her name is that you're just talking about. She's what I call like a keyboard troll. At least Diane has the balls to get on the camera and say what she needs to think she says. You know, you're just going to sit there and judge and give shit and all that stuff. Whatever. I'm just, at least she's got the balls to say, you want to give this whole thing, please? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There you go, good girl. Oh, not to put it on me. All right, I guess we're just going to leave this here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You need to go get a drink, huh? Um... Too much green bread. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. Mean no, that. that's alright. Okay. I don't like this. This is what I don't like the live streams to turn into. I don't like the live streams, and I, I'm not saying I didn't start it. I'm not saying I didn't perpetuate it, but I don't like that. This is not how I want to spend my St. Patrick's Day. Do you know what I mean? Just talking to people who have nothing but toxic things to say or do. Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm afraid of karma for you guys. Because you talk mm. about how fake my kidney cancer is. I'm, I'm hoping that you don't end up one day, you know, I'm not wishing it on you at all. Because I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. <laughs> it's not the most aggressive form of cancer, but it's not great either. Cancer is cancer, you know. Kicking an ass if you have a knee out yet, Jim. Have what? Kicking it Wick and said, one of my fave holidays. Hey, Jimmy, do you have the meat out yet? <laughs> well, it's no. in the closet. I can, I can pull it out anytime I want to. James said, Jim said mead before. I'm not mead. He said, um, Jameson. He wants well, I have it. Jameson, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. sleep most of the day. Mom day. has a, I'm sorry. Mom has a creme de mint, um, flavor syrup. And I was thinking like, ooh, what could we do with that? Make fake Irish coffee? Oh, I want a shamrock shake. Yeah, Mom wants a shamrock shake. Get on this one. Come on. No. No. I know. I didn't mean like that. <laughs> You've been asking for it for a while. We have an L ice cream show. You just want me to hold this and not have oh. to take it and chew it? You need to go get a drink. The peanut butter too salty. Oreo has her own jar of peanut butter here. I don't want you guys to think gross. Oh, you gave your dog peanut butter from your jar. Uh, this last... Chemo treatment, bout of mucositis, really didn't even let me eat creamy peanut butter, so they both turned into Oreo stores. Okay. Um, I can have peanut butter now, but I have like a squeezy jiff tube. Um, do I have rice caramel rice cakes with peanut butter and bananas on them? Oh my god, so good. Chocolate chip ones are good too, but caramel, just something about it. It's like a whole bananas forced or flambe peanut butter situation. So good. So, um, if anybody, listen, if anybody really has a legit question, 
Not an accusation, not something that you repeated there 35 times. Not a toxic question. Just ask a question. If you have a question, ask a question. Yes, I've been overweight my whole life. I was a rainbow baby that was fed, 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 fed. A hundred thousand million. I could show you pictures of when I was a fat little toddler sitting my second Christmas. Big old chubby, you know, like little boy speedy cake top with like only little tiny boobs already at two years old. I can show you when I was seven and I was wearing oversized clothes because the regular clothes didn't fit me. I can show you when I was a picture of me and my sisters at the porch. I don't even know what year that was. Um, we still had Duke, so it was somewhere between 76 and 82 because we didn't have Rob yet. So, um, But I, I'm sitting with my sister and I'm in shorts and you can see big old fat thighs at seven or eight years old. But I played softball and I played volleyball and I played, I ran track. I didn't run track, I did shot put. <laughs> like, I was, I was hella active because we didn't have what we had now. Like, we don't have games. We didn't have games to sit home and watch. And on the weekends was my mom's like dad's TV time and we would watch Sunday morning car Saturday morning cartoons and then the monster series and then we'd have to go out. You know, it's like we I never rode a bike. I didn't know how. My brother got hit by a car on a bike when he was ten, just about the time I was born. So my mom was like, No more bikes but by then everybody else had learned how to ride one. So I tried to learn how to ride a bike when I was like ten. It didn't work. I was too scared. I didn't have good balance on it. And then again when I was like sixteen, uh since I was an adult, I wanted to get a trike uh, for a long time. They're just very expensive for uh, overweight people, like uh, heavy duty ones. Um, but I really wanted to like bike ride for a long time. Um, now I don't even know if I could because of like the knee issue with the, with the cancer. But I would love to try to try. But I've always been, I've been a marching band. You talk about, we talk about how many squats you do in <laughs> In softball, how about marching in a marching band? Forget the two-mile parade that you have every Saturday, maybe Sunday too, but just practice. Just practice. Marching around a circle here on the parking lot. Hours and hours, hours and hours, hours and hours, hours and hours. Months and months and years and years. So, it's you know, as far as that's concerned, I didn't even have, let's even go back, let's even go further into the future. I didn't get my driver's license until I was 22 years old. Or 21. I didn't get my first car until I was 22, that's what it was. I didn't get my driver's license until I was 21, and I didn't get my first car until I was 22, 23, 23. And up to that point, I walked everywhere. You had to. Yeah. You know, because I. That's people what... talk about being active and being overweight, and they're not the same. Overweight is not only genetic, and it's not only hormonal, and it's not only things that we're learning, like with insulin resistance, but they're also about nutrition. And we didn't have, we couldn't afford good nutritious food when we were younger. You know, it's not this these days where it's like more prevalent and cheaper get vegetables and there's farm stand wasn't like that when we were growing up in the 70s you know in the 80s um so yeah i mean i've talked to told you guys about having to eat my lunch out of the garbage in school and how i've always used that as kind of a a, a joke but the truth is that's what it was um when the school year would start um people, kids would get money and a lunch time. And they would throw their whole lunch in the garbage and buy their lunch. And the lunch lady would take the bags of garbage, uh, the bags of food out of the garbage, and put them on the windowsill as long as they didn't have, like, as long as they were in a paper bag. But then as the year went by, when kids didn't want their lunch, they'd give them to the lunch ladies and they'd put them on the windowsill. And that's where I got my lunch almost the whole year. You know, almost the whole year. Every <laughs> once in a while, my grandma would be up enough until I was 12. She would be awake enough to give me, like, a 50 cent piece, like a penny and a half dollar she used to collect. And for 50 cents at my school, all you could get was milk and cookies, all you could afford. Unless it was the winter time, because in the winter time they used to sell 25 cent cup of noodles. Um, you know, like the Lipton <coughs> cup of noodles. The, the late Um, they have to wait till the 21st, paid it. <laughs> anyway, so, yep. yeah, I mean, we, we know now that it's about nutrition and exercise. It's not about being lazy. I didn't have the opportunity to be lazy when I was younger. 
And then when I was 12, my mother had a baby. Like, and you think I got to be lazy as a 12 year old with a baby? I started babysitting when I was 11. I babysat as a job <coughs> till I was. I met Jim. Right. I babysat as a job till I met Jim. No joke. I'm not putting more peanut butter on there. It took 25 minutes to lick it off. You need to go get a drink of water? Go get a drink? Go get okay, water? Okay, we got some good time. Okay, we'll get a drink of water. Uh, go get a drink. Work, uh, okay, so work, uh, I, I, let me go back. Taking it wagon. Okay. Marguerite says, "How are you, pretty lady?" Um, oh, I'm good, sweetheart. How are you? And you're pretty lady on your side of the oh, country. Oh, okay. Um, and then Kate still working and says that she loves my shirt. Um, I'm sorry. Somebody asked <laughs> where. Somebody asked where Nelly is. Um, nice when you, oh, okay, uh, JD says, be nice when you <laughs> move to sit on the porch and enjoy flowers. I hope watch, we get to have a porch. Yeah, Sorry. Or watch Oreo play. Get out and enjoy nature. Yes, yes. Kicking says, Jerry, it make me happy to see you have such great energy today and your color is just beautiful and gleaming. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. Okay. Pickleball girl was saying something about old school back then, then I guess. had uh, three bunches. Um, old get, schools or old? What did she say? Old all, schools? All schools, schools back, back then. then had yeah. three lunches, got Mine, mine did. Yeah. Not till I was in high school. A lot of a lot of states did not have a lot. No, we didn't have free lunch in my uh, my incorporated village school. <laughs> yeah, a lot of states in, when we were in grade school did not have free lunches. It wasn't until I was oh, we must have been just getting back from Germany when I first heard about it. When I my my middle school. Or it's now, we were the junior high school at the time, it's now middle school. My junior high school and elementary school didn't have free lunch. My high school did. Because we didn't go to high school in our town. Went to high school quite a few towns away. And uh, where I started high school, I was eligible for free breakfast and free lunch. Which was huge. But, again, not yeah. nutritious. You know, like, what did they offer for free breakfast? Toasted bagels, muffins, and chocolate milk or white milk. Like that wasn't nutritious. We know that now. At the time, it was calorie filling and it was yeah. filling, so it helped your brain work. But we know now that wasn't nutritious. Give me some eggs and give me like a spinach omelet, and I'm good, you know. But they didn't know that at the time. And remember, back in the 80s and 90s, cholesterol was the thing. It's all about the fat. Yeah. And it made so many of us diabetic because we were on such low fat diets and high sugar. They replaced all the fat with sugar on all those things that were like low fat. Fat free, fat free man, high sugar, high sugar. But anyway. Uh, Virginia yeah. Slim says, hope you go live tonight. Oh, Again. you? Yeah. 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 Uh, KK Wickham says, a green looks good on you. Yes, it does. Somebody, oh, Danny said, Jim, you look like the Lucky Charms guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not That's quite, good. but thank you. Your um, beard was red. <laughs> yeah. That goes 777 seven, seven, said, sorry you had to go through that. Jerry, I would have shared my lunch with you. Oh, it's okay. It's very sweet of you to say, but it's okay. It's just the way it was. You know, I was growing up poor, I was growing up poor. And, of course, I wasn't as poor as my mom when she was growing up, so she thought we were doing really well. She didn't realize how much trouble we had because we never learned to complain about it because, mm -hmm. you know, dead exes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and also knowing we're not as poor as her, so what are we worried about kind of thing. But, um... We, we talked about having milk and no cereal, or cereal and no milk, bread and no peanut butter, peanut butter, no bread. Like, it never worked out for us. It's just a lot of kids in a small house, so. Yeah. Hi. Can we hold hands? Let's see. Can we hold hands? Okay. Uh, hold hands? Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're doing this. You just want peanut butter. <coughs> yeah. You just want peanut butter, honey? So, if while Jim's figuring out if he's going to uh, find a comment or question, um, Oreo, 
I will, I will, I love to be able to hear that people can be like, look, Oreo slept there the whole time, but she slept a very, very short period of time. Her naps, when she naps, are like closer to two hours. So the fact that we're here talking has kept her up. So you can tell she's still sleepy because she's in this like half awake, I want to eat, half asleep kind of thing. Want this? Is it what you wanted? Do you want something else? Okay. I don't have nothing um, else. Hold on. Yeah, want a treat? Add that. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah? Okay. Where is it? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Yeah. Um. Don't you love when she sits up and hear me? Yeah, she is funny. Uh, Tammy is asking, uh, kicking and waking, why does, why does she call me Jim? Oh. Oh, because that's just being funny. Jimmy, yeah. when, uh, Jim, comma, Jimmy, oh. when... You know that he doesn't like it. What? I don't like it when people call me Jimmy, but... Except me. Well, family and yeah. close friends, yeah. Because it's, 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 it's what his name was, nickname was when you were little. Yeah. yeah. And until it was little Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> we had big Jimmy and little Jimmy. Right. Um, My father was... Now that I call him Jim most of the time, I always like referring to his father as Big Jim. I'm like, when Big Jim was something, something I'll ask Mom, you know? Yeah. Got Jim, I'm sorry. But I mean, yeah, Kicken's known me for quite some time. Yeah. Um, you correspond outside of YouTube? Uh, not like much. Emails or anything? Okay. Not much. Um, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I think my email and, and whatnot is on my. No. Is I mean, they can they can be a YouTube like it's. Yeah. H U S D A N D zero eight zero five zero zero at gmail dot com. That's the email. That's his YouTube email. Um, yeah. You can find that in. Uh, no, actually, you can't. That's just your email. No, wait. I'm confused. Maybe. I think the email from his YouTube channel and his about page is the YouTube email. Yeah. I'll have to look. We'll have to look and add it to my um, info. Let me look real quick. Um, Why are you doing that? <laughs> what? I have to read what. Oh, okay. It's between Margaret and this house of house of Joey Joni. Joni. Which, yeah. Um, I know who she is. And house of Joni. Yeah. Oh, okay. She's another uh, crony. Oh wow! Okay. And I have no, I have no problem saying it because I'm sorry. Um, I've decided to remove all filters for the rest of my life because beating around the bush is just getting too tiresome. For the rest of his life? Oh my goodness! I can't. Um, I have no idea where that popped I'm up. Kidding. Jerry. Oh, you had something that popped up. Oh yeah, because it was asking me, do I want to share the screen? So I just picked the other channel. Oh okay. So I'm trying to look at your channel as well. I'm trying to look at your page. What? Oh. I want to see what it says about your about page to see if your email's on there. So Go ahead. Sorry. Um. Oh no, just your YouTube email. Uh, pickle boy. Uh, pick, pickle girl. Excuse me. Um. It's saying, Jerry, your outfit headband is so cute. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks. That's from the dollar store. Um. <laughs> What am I old Maya saying? Christmas, I sold a lot of my personal belongings one year, and I bought a family of five a ton of stuff for Christmas. I still have pictures of everything. Best feeling in the world. Yes, it is. It's one of the, I mean, giving out of love and joy um, to the needy family is... Well, giving in general. That's yeah. my love language. But go ahead. What do you it, it's, it's one of the most joyous feelings I've ever had. My okay. parents never asked for help. And that's the big thing we know now as adults. They had, they had things. You know, they had programs back then. But they were prideful. My parents are both from the, I guess, the silent generation is what they call it. Um, the, the, uh, my father was definitely working below the poverty level for a family of as many we had, seven kids, 
family of nine, and then my grandma came to live with us as we were a family of ten. Um, my yeah. mom worked since I started. Not right underneath there. My mom, yeah. my mom started working from the time like I started school. Actually, before that, to be honest with you. Uh, but mostly when I started school, she always had like a, a full time job. She did drove a cab. She tended the bar. Just things that she could do to make money to get through. But it still was like it still was hard times because but they didn't ask for any help. The only time we ever had like my mom, she used to, my mom used to drive her friend to uh, social work. I, we, called, we used to call my mom the unofficial social worker of Island Park because if she had a friend who was poor, she would take them to like all their appointments and stuff. Because she had a car and that's what she knew. Like, I knew I have a car, you know, like, and I can do what this is what I yeah. can do to help. I don't have money to help and I don't have food to help, but I can help with people. But one time the lady gave my mom, um, that she had got an extra block of the government hey. fees. She's trying to get her phone, baby, that's all. Oh, that's Yeah, baby, you can get it, it's okay. Didn't hit it. I didn't know it. Oh, it's under the table. Okay. It's under the table. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's up against the leg. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can have it. Go ahead. Get it. Um, anyway, so we had gotten a block of the, like, it's, it was like Velveeta. They call it the government cheese, but that's what it was like. It was like Velveeta. Um, which now is like, that, that block of cheese nowadays would probably be worth $30. But um, that was the one thing. And then when I went to camp, I noticed that they got the government cheese because the camp I went to was based, you know, for poor kids um, to where everybody was granted, you know, from the, from the state, like we'd fundraise for it or whatever. And they had the giant cans of peanut butter that looked like somebody's ashes. And it was just really funny. Giant, giant can of peanut butter and jelly. Um, doesn't matter what they were serving for lunch. You always had the option to go get peanut butter and jelly instead. So, go ahead, I'm sorry. And bug juice, you know, bug juice from camp. So. Diane... Um, asks, why does the dog lick your pants? Who's Dan? Dan. Your pants. The dog licking my pants? Well, the way the camera looks. Oh. Yeah. She, she had a bone piece trapped here, and that was what, and then this is her pillow that she eats on so I don't get peanut butter on me. But sometimes she drops food on there. I mean, I don't know. I didn't notice she was licking my pants, but... <laughs> right now she's chewing a bone that I have to hold because apparently it's at a, at a height that she doesn't feel like she can hold it comfortably. So there. We can do that, Mona. We what? what? She says, hey, Dad said when we come next month we want to be in the live. Oh, sure. That'd be fun. Oh, my gosh. That'd be so much fun. That'd be so much fun. I can't wait. And then... We'd have to really zoom out, though. <laughs> We'll figure out something. Yeah, I'm just kidding. We can go. Uh, says, yeah, that does look a bit good, right? But Di- D-A-N-I. Oh, name. about the dog looking like my pants? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. The dog looking my pants. That's really funny. Why Mona, does the dog that sounds like That sounds exciting. That's from uh, what is, Kicking and Wicken. What is Mona? Oh. About Doing the live. Father. Oh, doing the live. Yeah, oh, kicking it what Ikin said? Yeah. Mona should be in the live? It said, uh, Mona, that sounds exciting. Oh, kicking it what Ikin said, Mona, that sounds exciting. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, ouch. I'm sorry. My hand is... By the way, this was a new bone this morning. At 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it wasn't 10 o'clock. It was like 11. Mm, you brought her in. Yeah. yeah. Or 10.30, that's what it was, 10.30. Mm. Bits of life. What, my oh my, I bet there were so excited it makes you feel so happy to excite the family. Because they're talking about the uh, Christmas one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when we first moved here, um, the church was, well, they still do it, but the church was doing, um, the, for the Show Me Kids, which is the foster home, they show me it's a foster home up in, uh, Mom is in, like, Jeff, it's a few of them, but the one we were doing was in Jeff City, right? They used to drive to Jeff City or Columbia? What? The, the show me kids that you make cookies for. Oh, um, no, show me is up north, like, northeast Missouri. Oh, even, for, even further? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, because the, there's many houses across the state. I didn't know which right. one we always donated to. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Okay. Show me. So I adopt, was able to adopt a kid, and I was like, you know, we still had money at the time because I just moved here. And uh, I, I, she loved photography, so I bought her a point and shoot. I bought her like a, a little Kodak Pixel, and I liked mine, and it wasn't very expensive. I mean, it was probably very expensive for her, but it wasn't expensive for me. 
and uh, that was so much fun. But then every year after that, by the time the tree went up, the tree was empty. Like, I don't know how. Well, were you people getting inside scoops? And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to think that uh, it was uh, one woman from church. She and her husband went up to yeah. show me. And they would get uh, the the cards for the yeah. kids who need. And I kind of think she gave a few away before she, she actually have, announced you know it in church because always, I would get there real quick. I was going to say, we always went to 10 o'clock mass, and they have an 8.30 mass, so maybe they all got bought up at 8.30. I guess. Mass, you know? I guess. But anyway, Mom used to, we used to bake dozens and dozens of cookies. Mom did it before I moved here, but then I would help her to um, yeah. bake dozens and dozens of cookies to give away for Christmas and to send up to the show me kids. Yeah. I had started that um, before they got here. Actually, it was a, a, my dear oh, friend. Used to get them. <laughs> huh? we yeah. Used to get them for well, no, I was sending yours uh, way before I started baking for Show Me. Oh, for Show Me. Okay. She right. was. Uh, it was a really good friend's sister was down visiting one year, and I had made all kinds of cookies and taken them over to her, the, her house and everything. And she said, she, she said, you like to bake so much. Why don't you make some for Show Me? And I thought, well, yeah, why not? So uh, that started years before Jim and Jerry came. Oh yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the last couple of years, nobody's making any yeah. cookies for anybody. Yeah, cookie baking for dozens and dozens of cookies don't really go hand in hand. Mm. Well, the first Christmas, this is what we talked about. The first Christmas, I fell out of my brace. I wasn't really setting up. You know, I had the beginnings of the rash, uh, the beginnings of the um, the back wounds or whatever. So I wasn't really setting up a whole bunch and. Uh, then the second Christmas, which was um, 2022, was, again, like, I had the, the back pain. The, the tumor was really bothering me because the brace was off. And then last year, we said, I just happened to not be feeling good. Christmas, this year, I was on treatment. And I was like, uh, don't ever do treatment on the holidays. Uh, if, you have a ch if you have a choice to not have chemo during the holidays, don't have chemo during the holidays. I didn't even have energy to wrap presents. Jim wrapped all the presents. <laughs> And I was like, did I wrap your presents? No, right? You even wrapped your own? Yeah, I oh, wrapped yeah. them all. Because he's like, oh, I'll wrap my own presents. And I'm like, well, I've been wrapping my own presents for how many years before I met you? So go wrap. And only the last few years, but I actually was like, why don't you wrap my presents? He would wrap something that he would always buy me, like a surprise. Like, I, one, I don't know, but most I would buy myself clothes on clearance. Like, I had a season clothes on clearance and just send them to him and he would wrap them for me. Um, kicking it, yes. Sorry. Baking cookies is fun. Oh, yes. I love running around the kitchen uh, doing loved. fun. <laughs> loved. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is. Yeah. I love running around. I just can't do it anymore. Well, that's it. And um, what's the most cookies I baked for Christmas? I, oh, gosh. Gosh. How many dozen went into the bin for show me? Yeah, for real. For I sure. mean, we yeah. probably baked about 50. Do you think 50? Probably, at least. 50 dozen? Between the different varieties yeah. of cookies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And some batches bake most. Let's put presents, it this you know? way. When uh, late in November, they would announce at church when they were taking the gifts up to show me. Mm -hmm. And I would start baking right about then, or at least m to make sure that I had about enough cookies to go whatever date it was. So it may be the 1st of December, you know, to do two batches a day, something like that. And then... Let's see, uh, I mailed out cookies uh, about the 15th, and I mean, I baked basically from the 1st of December through Christmas yeah. Eve. I was going to say, let's go back even further, and I said, she start buying butter in October. <laughs> yeah, I would, start, I would start buying butter and flour and sugar yeah, in October like, just to stack, I mean, exactly, like a pound of butter, two pounds of butter here, a bag of sugar, so a bag of flour. Just so it one bill. <laughs> yeah. One month's grocery bill. Right. Okay. So, I don't remember I, I know, you know, I to remember. say exactly how many dozen. Sure, that's hard. I just remember from batches. Yeah, because the batches. dozen part is hard because some cookies, one batch of cookies, one batch of one kind of cookies will make dozens, but one batch of another kind of cookies will only make a dozen or two. Like, two dozen, two or three yeah, dozen. Yeah, it depends. It depends Where some on, seem to make about five or six dozen. Yeah, like when we did going the cookie going scoops, going. the cookie cups, mm -hmm. you know, we would get way more out of the cookie cups than we would out of, like, the peppermint cookies because the peppermint cookies come out of a roll and you make them and da da da. You know, so it's like depending on the cookie. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and then some she would make that morning travel and you don't know until you come here that you right. realize, uh, what's a kolachki? You know what I mean? Yeah, like what's a kolachki? Yeah. yeah. My, I can't, I didn't send them to my sister because they have cream cheese in yeah. it. 
and even to send them to St. Louis was, you know. Exactly. So when she would come down here, it was like, I had the Galatskis. <laughs> She's going to eat every single one of them. Oh, my God. Poor Sharon. When Sharon came for Christmas that year, she literally was like, would walk by and grab one and walk by and grab one. Sharon's, like, favorite thing is cheese, and then cheesecake is, like, her favorite dessert. And that's what they look. They have, like, the cheese, and then they're, like, cheesecake, and it's, like, cheesecake. So she would, like, walk by, grab one, walk by, grab one. She's like, I have to stay in the kitchen. It's like, I'm making myself sick. <laughs> yeah. And she'd yeah. be like, can you make those cookies? Well, I used to, I got in trouble when, <laughs> when we first moved in here. Um, I used to do the rollout cookies. I had a portable dishwasher. Yeah. And the height was just right for the rollout cookies. We didn't get in trouble. The, we were just uh, like, uh, don't do that again. You might hurt yourself or might break it or whatever. But yeah. yeah. Uh, the counter is a little bit too high. The table is a little bit too low. So the kitchen island was. Jerry had a, has a kitchen island that um, I made cookies on the first year and kind of weakened it. Yeah, she's from, like, she's like, oh, it's, and you know, we had to tighten the legs and we put up supports or whatever, but I was like, but then I started rolling them out for her because I was like, why well, do you have to do everything, you know, like. Yeah, because she, can, can, do, she like, can do it sitting down yeah, and I just, I can't. So, and I mean, it's just and, and with angle the, of the dangle. You always said many hands make light work and that's the truth. And my mom, you know, mom's back was starting to like, you know, and she's been having a bad back for years, but. When it comes to making cookies, whatever I could do to help, so she wouldn't have to like stand up and roll out, and then try to sit down, and then wait for the beeper to time, and then roll out more. You know, like whatever I could do to help, we just get the cookies going faster. What we ended up doing, we were bumping out cookies so much we needed more cooling racks because they weren't cooling fast enough. Yeah. Coming. So like, um, I how I don't know how long that counter yeah. is in the in yeah. the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. But we had that whole counter nine, nine lined nine, nine with feet. with baking uh, cooling racks, yeah. basically. Nine feet worth of cooling racks and then, on, part, on a wax paper. <laughs> yeah, and then she had some that stood on top of each yeah, other. They stacked, so you're like, uh... So we're just trying to, like, cool... We're just, like, trying to pump the cookies out. And then one year, I also made the big the big batch cookies. I have them all on my channel that I got from Pinterest. They're, like, the giant, giant cookies. Um... And I made those too, and then the chocolate crinkle cookies. And then we were like, it's too many cookies. We're too many cookies. Let's make the those other cookies at different times of the year. Yeah. I'm like, uh. <sighs> Need a drink? Go get a drink of water. Hey, go get a drink. Water, go. Um, Jim informed me that we're almost at two hours. Do you guys have any questions that we didn't answer that you want to throw back down below? So we can see them in case we lost them. We do sometimes lose questions in the spray over there because, you know, who's at what point and then he thought he answered it, but he didn't and he might have typed it and didn't tell me, blah, blah, blah. If you have any last minute questions, just throw them in the, the comments down there on the bottom so we can see them refreshed. And otherwise, we're probably going to get going to have some St. Patrick's Day breakfast and then make some Apple soda room. bread and then everybody naps. Right. Ethel Reed just got here. Hi. Oh, man. Top of the morning to you. Afternoon. Evening. Good night. Oh, my watch is telling me it's time to wait and stand up. I must have been in the live stream too long. Um, yeah, we're close to two hours, so we're um, going to we're gonna have to get going. But um, does anybody have any coming up or any more, live, any more questions coming up here? No, not no. really. Um. All right. Well, listen, I want everybody to have a very... Happy and safe, and safe St. Patrick's Day. If you don't have to go out while you're drinking, don't. If you can drink at home, that's better. Stay there. Um, try not to climb down the stairs when you're drunk. But other than that, go for it. Um, no, but really have a safe St. Patrick's Day and a beautiful Sunday. And I hope you guys enjoy. And listen, if nobody told you today that you're loved, you can always come by and hear how much I love you. Because I love you very much. And so does Oreo. You say goodbye. You say goodbye. You say goodbye. Speak. Rude speak. Yeah. She's too busy looking at the dog on the TV. Um, so speak. Come on. Oh, Margarita said same to you, Jerry Ann. Oh, thank you. Speak to the people. Say hi. Come on, speak. What are you doing? Speak. You're not talking to me? <laughs> anyway, as always, you have anything to say? No. All right, as always, you guys take care. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 I think Jim would learn to like start getting up when we're ready to say goodbye. So we can turn the camera on. <laughs> says, Jim, Jim sits over. on the couch like a fat little leprechaun. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? I'm still reading. He's still reading. That's what he's doing. Say bye. Uh oh. Say bye.